Corinthians. Right? Okay. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 11, the foundation is Jesus Christ. Verse number 11 says, For other foundation no man can lay, that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the foundation of every child of God. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus Christ, a name that is above every other name. Jesus Christ, our redeemer. See, if your foundations are right, then you're going to do the right thing. Thereupon, you, sh- you ought to be building on, on the right thing, but the foundation is faith in Jesus Christ. My faith is based on Jesus Christ. Right. Going to the book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse number 5. Verse number five, besides this, giving all diligence, add to your foundation. Faith, when you see the word faith, it has to always do faith in Jesus Christ. Not in any other mysterious thing that people talk about today. We have a lot of mixtures that are going around when we got to put everybody into one category and you see, we got to receive from every God and goddess that we have heard from, that we have heard about, and make that our foundation. No, the foundation is Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. He is the foundation, and there is no other foundation that you can build on. He is the only foundation, and so we got to build on him. These seven things that that is going to keep you stable in these unstable times. Besides this, giving all diligence to your, add to your faith. It's something that you add upon. Or I would say the, few, the, the next five things that we're going to see or the six things that we're going to see is about your interior decor or your, 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 your lifestyle. The foundation is Jesus Christ and thereafter we're going to build upon Jesus Christ certain things and then we find the last thing that we cover is love which is a roof which is the roof of our life, okay? So in between the foundation and the roof, we have the interior decor, which is number one is virtue, right? Add to your faith virtue. It's talking about a manly valor, excellence and purity, These things are very important that would keep you strong in these unstable times. Peter was unstable in many ways, but he was a forward Peter, an impetuous Peter who was always forward. He wanted things his way. I mean, the guy is the one who who chopped the ear off of the people who came to arrest Jesus. And Jesus picked up the ear and fixed it back. This is the kind of guy who is talking about these seven characters, these seven important factors that would keep you always. Now, let me even, before I go, I'd like to read verse number 10 from the same scripture. Verse number 10 says, Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. What are these things? The seven things that we're going to see. If you do these things, you shall never fall. These are times that we're living in that people fail, fall, discouraged, giving up their faith, surrendering to the enemy, going back to the world. Things that can be shaken are being shaken and people are being been thrown off. I mean, they kind of think, what are the use of following the Lord? There's nothing good coming out. But if you put these things, if you put these things, therefore rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling an election. Know that you're elected and you're sure about your salvation. And the, if these things be in you, you shall Never. It didn't say sometimes you may fall. It said you shall never fall. You shall never fall. 
I like the word never, which means it's impossible for you to fail. It's impossible for you to fall. Things are going from bad to worse in the world. But if you hold on to these seven things in your life, I'm sure there may be other things also, but, then, but, but I'll take one scripture concerning this, concerning this, this word, verse number 10. I will never fall. It's not through pride, but it's only by the grace of God that I stand. It's only by the grace of God that I stand. If, you, if you're firm-footed, if you start your life with faith, which is the foundation, and not give in to unbelief. See, if you give in to unbelief, your foundation is not sure. Like the children of Israel, let me take you to the book of uh, Romans. Romans chapter number 11. Romans chapter 11 it's talking about the children of Israel. What made them to fall? Why did they fail? Why did they fail? Verse number 20, it says, Well, because of their unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. You stand by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Simply, the Lord is saying, you stand on faith and don't be proud-hearted because God resisted the proud and he gives grace to the humble. So when he says, be not high-minded, it simply means humble yourself and God gives you more grace for you to walk this walk and you will not fall. You may see a lot of people who are going to fail you're going to see a lot of exposure taking place in the lives of individuals and you wouldn't have even imagined such people. I would have never expected so and so to fail or move away from the faith and start believing like the way that we believed at one time but then now he or she is believing something contrary. You're going to be, your, 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 your faith is going to be challenged. Your life is going to be challenged by certain people. You really thought that they were people of faith. You really thought that they were people who were really stable. But only when the shaking starts, we'll know how firm your faith is. So number one, we need to realize that our foundation is, is Jesus Christ. And we don't want to be broken off only because we are, we are having a good foundation. Your foundation is good. So if your foundation is good, don't be high-minded. Don't be proud-hearted. Be somebody who is willing to help somebody else out. Be somebody who is willing to, to stand on your foundation and be a blessing to somebody else. Extend your arms of love and your faith to build them up, strengthen them, lift them up. Don't pull them down, lift them up. Right? Be not high-minded. This is where the children of Israel fell. Because they got into unbelief and they started talking in pride. Where is God? What has God done for me? And he has not even... Everything that from day one that God started doing in their lives when they were slaves, it was God who brought them out of slavery through the Red Sea provided them in the, in, in the, in the wilderness. And, and the Bible talks about the wilderness, the church that was in the wilderness. If you ever knew that God considered the children of Israel as a church in the wilderness. Let me show you that scripture from the book of Acts chapter number 7. Chapter 7 and verse 38. Chapter 7 and verse 38. You'll see Moses being the pastor of the millions of people who came out, verse 37, this is that Moses, this is that which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. He's talking about Jesus who was supposed to be born and become the shepherd of the church. Verse number 38 says, this is he, 
about Jesus that was in the church in the wilderness. This church was led by Jesus himself in the wilderness. Although Moses was handling some of the affairs, but God helped him out, talked to him. This is the church in the wilderness. But now we are not in the we are not the church of the wilderness. We are the, in the we are the church of the firstborn. We are the church of the first woman. People talk to you and say, what denomination you belong to? And you know, all kinds of things. Well, in the worldly manner, people would say, yeah, we belong to this group, we belong to that group. It's all right, but all those tags are going to disappear when you, when you, when you, when you, when you are going to heaven. Just for, just for the sake of being in this world and you try to identify yourself. But, but let me show you the church that you really belong to. Hebrews chapter 12. So that you will not be you will not be a person who is so, you know, caught up with one kind of a thing. This is what I believe in. Oh, yeah, this is how I am. And, and I'm so stuck. I mean, be open. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you because the fivefold ministry is in every denomination. Every denomination put together has the fivefold ministry. No one particular denomination will have all the fivefold. There is a possibility. But then most of the time you find, you find the prophetic and the apostolic and the teaching ministry outside. And they're, because they're supposed to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Now this is the church that you belong to. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 22. But you are come unto Mount Zion. Refers to the church of the living God. Unto the city of the living God. You have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of angels the general assembly and the church of the first born Jesus was the first to be born again and placed in the church and we are all just as he, he is the first born he was the first to be born again Oh, Jesus, I thought he was the son of God. He didn't have to get born again. He died. He was considered. The Bible says he, he, he became sin so that we might be the righteousness of God. So if he, if he became sin, then he had to get born again. In his resurrection, he got born again. In our waters of baptism, we got born again. But he was the first to be born again. He was the first to be born again. Right? So, understanding that fact, let's place ourselves in a position to be stabilized in unstable times. Don't be surprised when you see some things happening around in the world and don't let your faith be shaken just because you see things happening around. I mean, you expected things to get better and better and you thought probably, well, we are going to see, we are going to have a harvest of souls for sure. People are going to get born again and you'll be surprised some of the people who get born again and you would think, oh my God, I would have never expected so and so to be in church. God does marvelous things. He even told the children of Israel, I'll do something in your time that you will be surprised. Let me show you that scripture. In Acts chapter, he said, I'll put you in, in a position. He, he really made the children of Israel jealous by saving us Gentiles. Right? In Acts chapter 13, in Acts chapter 13 and verse number 40. Okay, we'll read from verse number 39. For by him, by Jesus, all that believe are justified. All that believe in Jesus are justified. Cleansed, made pure, made holy. You're set apart, you're justified just as if you have never sinned before through him, by believing in him. Right? Justified, not from a few things, from all things. 
there is no judgment against you because you believed in Jesus Christ. Your judgment was placed on Jesus Christ and you become a new creation in Christ Jesus so that you have come into a new relationship. You, were, you and I were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We, we, were, we, were, we were not having any gods that we served really. But when we came to Christ, we are justified of all things. We are justified. It's hard for people to believe that I'm justified of all things. No, you, are, you, you better believe that you are. From which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. By keeping the law of Moses, you couldn't be justified. You couldn't be justified. People are still trying to bring the laws of Moses and try to justify themselves. And, and, and the Bible very clearly states here that you could not be justified from some of the things, you could not be justified to the extent where you couldn't be born again as an Old Testament saint. But you are now justified of all things. And the grace of God has come into your life and you get more and more grace as you walk in humility, as you say, Lord, I humble myself and I'm walking in the grace of God. And God will begin to show you more things. Verse number 40, beware therefore lest that come upon you which was spoken of the prophets. Behold, you despisers and wonder and perish for I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you. He's talking about Jesus, about the Jews, and about all what the prophets spoke about. He says, you despise us. You've been despising the Gentiles. You've been cutting off the Gentiles. And they are like dogs. And, and they, are, they are like pigs. We don't have nothing to do with them. We never even entertain them in our, in our, amongst us. We never invited them into our homes. We just despise them. But God did a great work amongst the Gentiles. And we would, he's still going to do the same thing among some of the people who think that they are saved and who go to church just because they, they kind of think, you know, I go to church and I'm saved. If you ask them, how are you saved? Yeah, because I go to church. I was born to a Christian home. I'm surely I know that I'm, I'm saved. How would you know that? Well, you look at somebody who, is, who had no, no experience at all of Christianity and nothing at all to do with Christianity and he gets saved and he becomes a, a spirit-filled man and he moves in the spirit and you kind of despise that. Oh, these are these extremists. We don't go into that extreme level. Well, God is an extreme God and the devil is on one extreme and God is on one extreme. There is nothing called a little of the devil and little of God. Well, we got to be balanced. That's the balance that people are talking about. You got to be a little of God and little of the devil. Well, you're supposed to be extremely full of the Holy Spirit, doing things that you would do things unnaturally because you're a supernatural person. Although we walk in the natural world, we have a warfare in the spiritual realm. We do things supernaturally. You are different. They might despise you, but don't be upset about it. Don't be upset about it. Stand strong. Be stable. God says, I will stabilize you in these unstable times. These are times that, you know, people are wondering which way to go. How, what are we going to do? It's all confusion around. But you're supposed to be a different character. In unstable times, God says, you're going to be stabilized. I want to be stabilized when things are unstable around me. When the boat is shaking and when the boat is rocking, I'm still stable. I can imagine Jesus sleeping in the boat. That's a sermon altogether, a different sermon. Jesus was able to stay in a boat that was almost about to sink. But it never bothered him. 
he was having probably a wonderful sleep and then he woke up all of us. He was, he was woken up by the disciples. He could have kept sleeping all the time. And even if the ship sunk, or the boat sunk, he would have still reached his destination. Because he was a man who was living by his word. He said, let's go over onto the other side. If he said it, it's the disciples who were upset about it. You know, when you, when you start your journey with Jesus, I can imagine the disciples of Jesus would have thought, we started off with this man, Jesus, and we have ended up in the middle of nowhere. Why couldn't he go to sleep seeing that everything is in order? In unstable times, he was still stable. In unstable times, he was still stable. People have, we have a lot of questions. Why is this not happening this way? Why isn't that happening? Why? Questions don't bring an answer to you. Believing God's word brings an answer to your life. It's a truth that makes you free. It's not question after question after questions. The Bible says false doctrines always creates questions in your mind. But the truth always makes you free. Get hung up with the truth and you shall be stabilized in these unstable times. You shall be. You shall be. You will be. And you shall never fall. You know, there are things that the Bible records. You shall never fall. Means you shall never fall. That's how easily we need to accept it. Right? So, we're going to see some people who are getting, getting saved and people who are going to be so transformed and unimaginable. Right? A work which you shall no wise believe. Sometimes we couldn't even believe. I mean, am I looking at this person? Is this man saved really? Yeah. He was the worst out of all, but today he's saved. That's how Jesus does things. Not with the religious folk who are so religious and so traditional and so kind of, you know, to themselves and God. I put God in a box and he must work in this manner. He must work with those who are really good people. I mean, after all, he, he's a good God. He must save only good people, no? He went into a Pharisee's house and the woman who, who walked in, get crashed into the, the Pharisee's house uninvited. She started worshipping Jesus with her tears, with her hair, with her oil, with cleaning up his feet. And, and, the, and, and the Pharisee said, oh, ja, 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 this is not clean. This is, this is, after all, he should know that he's, if he's a prophet, he should know who this street woman is. They, didn't, they, thought, they thought this is not the way a prophet should behave. If he's truly a prophet, and they started judging his calling. If he's a true prophet, he should know who this street woman is. We should never accept her into this. You know, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't receive those people. But they are the ones whom the Lord came for. He said, I come for the sick. I don't come for the healed ones. Those who think that they are healed. He said, the physician is needed for the ones who, who really are in need of, who are sick. If you really know that you are sick, you need to go to the physician. And that's the reason. And she knew that she was sick. That's the reason she came to the great physician and said, I need to be healed of all my guilt and my shame. I'm just pouring it all into your feet with my tears and with my precious oil and with everything, with my hair. I'm just worshipping you. I'm just pouring it all on you. And Jesus looked at her and said, your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you. But the religious people, they could not believe. They said no. And Jesus said something like this in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Matthew 
chapter 8. After the centurion, centurion's servant was healed. It was, I mean, nobody would think of a Roman soldier and say, he's a Roman, he's a Gentile. We consider them as hogs. They're not supposed to get healed. But this, that the Jews thought that they, these were hogs, he got his prayer answered. How come? Faith in Jesus Christ justifies you from all things. Faith in Jesus Christ. In Matthew 8, after that took place, Jesus said in verse number 10, he said, I have not found so great faith. It was not works, it was faith, it was great faith that he, Jesus, looked in the life of this centurion and said, your faith, this, this kind of a great faith, I have not found in Israel. And Jesus walks into some of our churches today, he said, he would say, I can't find that kind of a faith in you. I can find in some Gentile who just walks in and gets their healing and goes out. But some of the church folk, they need to be pumped because they are traditionally they are taught God gives you sickness. God gives you problems. God is molding and melting you and making you into his image. And he, Jesus was molded for you to be straightened out. Jesus was shaped. He learned, the Bible says he learned obedience and he died on the cross so that you and I may be set free. We might stand upright and say, I'm justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm purified, I'm sanctified, I'm a child of God. Oh no, I don't feel worthy. You're despising the grace of God. Trampling underfoot the blood of Jesus when you say, I'm just an unworthy sinner. I'm just a nobody. You trample the grace of God. Let me show you that scripture. Go with me to uh, Hebrews 10. We'll come back to this Matthew because I want to show something from that. Hebrews 10 and verse number 29. Of how much more so or worse punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy uh, who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood uh, of covenant, has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had despised the spirit of grace. Three important factors here. The blood the spirit of grace and the son of God. People who despise. You better stop despising your salvation and start appreciating God and say, God, it was nothing of mine. It was all because I believe that Jesus is the son of God. It is all because of the grace of the spirit of grace and it's all because of the blood of Jesus I stand today not by my works. So you don't have to go by your feelings. You've got to believe that I'm a child of God only because of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, because of his blood and because of the grace of God. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm made clean. I'm made pure. And what God has cleansed, who are you to judge yourself and say, I'm just a nobody. I'm just an unworthy vessel. He cleansed your vessel and put the Holy Spirit inside of you. How could you have the Holy Spirit inside of you if you're still unworthy? How could you have a vessel that is unclean if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. The Holy Spirit is inside of you, has cleansed you, washed you, made you pure, and made you a child of God. Rise up from that, all those religious 
muck, get all that religious muck out of you and say, I'm a child of God, I'm born again, I'm stable in these times that things are not stable around. I'm stabilized. You know, a stabilizer is, to, uh, uh, is, is an instrument that keeps the power straight and strong. It doesn't move here and there. It keeps you well balanced. So God wants to keep you, sta- he wants you to be, be stabilized in these unstable times. He wants you to be strong. Don't look at somebody's faith. Oh my God, I really thought that he was a man of faith. He has fallen. Oh my, if he fell, how could I stand? He has, he's accountable to his God. We read that scripture in Romans. He can fall and he can, God can even make him straight. His faith has nothing to do with your life and your relationship that you have with the Lord. You build yourself, you keep yourself strong. Don't be carried away. And people come up with all kinds of things. Okay, quickly. And, and Jesus said, when he saw the centurion's faith in verse number 11, he said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west. Many. Jesus said, many shall come from the east and from the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, in the kingdom of God. There are going to be people who are going to get saved and you'll think, my, the last person I ever thought would be saved. But they would be seated up there. And the children of the kingdom, they were talking about, Jesus was talking about the Israelites. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. And there shall be Weeping and gnashing of teeth because they really thought, my, we, <clears throat> we are saved because of our good works. After all, we haven't, they didn't want to believe in Jesus, but they believed, or oh, we believe in Moses. Moses gave us bread, so we believe in Moses. He said, my father gave. It was not Moses who gave them bread, it was my father. And they were so mad because every time Jesus said, my father, He was making himself equal with God. They picked up stones to stone him. Right? So I believe it's important for you to stand strong concerning your salvation. Faith in Jesus Christ. Not not faith in the works. Faith in Jesus Christ. Add to your faith. Going back to 2 Peter chapter 1. Add to your faith. Add to your faith virtue. You've got to add. You have to add that virtue. Got to be strong in excellence. That word virtue also means excellence. Do things in excellence. Study the word in excellence. Do things in excellence. Do it in style. Do it in the way that God wants you to do it. And you can easily know of of somebody who was so strong in unstable times, in an unstable kingdom, he was strong. Let me take you to the book of Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Add to your faith the first factor of stabilizing your self as a child of God in these unstable times is to do things and to know things in excellence. Do things in excellence. Right? In Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president's and the princesses before because because an excellent spirit was in him. He did things in excellence. He didn't do things haphazardly. He was having this virtue of purity and excellence. When he did something, he did it in excellence. It's important that you study the word of God in excellence. 
don't just take it from here and there and say, oh yeah, I believe in this, I believe in that. I, you get confused. You get confused. Believe the word of God. Understand the word of God in excellence. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I mean, you start believing by faith I'm saved and the next day you believe, oh, what about Moses? I mean, after all, Moses also was a man. When Moses and Elijah appeared in the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter really thought, my, we need to go to Moses, we need to go to Elijah, and we need Jesus also, so let's make three tabernacles. For our salvation, we need three tabernacles so that we would make it, it makes it so easy for us to come to this mountain and, and receive the oracles or whatever God wants us to. But the cloud or the heavenly father, the Holy Spirit, erased the two and said, a voice from heaven came and said, this is my beloved son. Hear what he says. You're not saved by Moses or you're not sanctified by Elijah and then you are not kind of, you know, something else through Jesus. Everything is Jesus. Study in excellence the word of God. See, when you study in excellence, you're stable. You are not going to be carried about with every wind of doctrine by the cunning craftiness of people. People are so swayed all over. They go from one teaching to another teaching and... Wow, wow, you can watch their lives today, they believe in something, and the next thing, because there is no excellence in their lives. Go around wanting a prophecy and despise even the word of God. Take the prophecy as, as a final authority instead of taking the word of God as a final authority in your life. Let me show you something from the book of Deuteronomy. You know, I got this message within five minutes, but it might take about five lessons for me to do because I know we are almost time. When the Lord gave me this message, it just came to me. It's not that I don't study the word, but this particular message this morning that I got. But I know it might take a, a while for me to get, get into these seven uh, areas that we need to really clean up ourselves, polish up ourselves. Deuteronomy chapter number 18 Or chapter, four, chapter 13, we'll read first. Deuteronomy chapter 13. See, be an excellent character. Don't be carried away by things that come by your way. Verse number one. If there arise among you a prophet, which means he could be a false or a genuine prophet. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth a sign or a wonder. If there arise a prophet, it could be a good pro it could be a genuine or a false prophet. And the sign and the wonder come to pass. Uh, the sign and the wonder come to pass, whereof he spoke unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. So the sign and the prophecy or, or, or the wonder came to pass. But he misleads you into some other doctrines which you have not, which you ha you have not heard of. Right? He, he draws you away into some other doctrine. A prophet can prophesy and then it may even come to pass. Let us go after other gods, which means let us have some other kind of practices from the apart from the foundational teachings that we already have right now. Okay? Let us go after the other God, which thou, sh thou hast not known. You have not known. You never learnt it. It has never been so. Just because a prophet comes into your life and prophesies something over your life and then it comes to pass in your life, and, oh my God, he becomes the God of my life. I throw the Bible aside. I throw all my teachings aside. Every time I have a need, prophet, can you help me out? I need a prophet. I mean, 
and every time you will have to you 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 have to l- depend and live according to his way because he has never every prophet will always draw people unto the, their hearts to the lord a prophet never leads them in another pathway a prophet always leads them to the heart of god let me show you that hold on to this scripture and take uh, let me take you to the book of first kings chapter 18 first kings chapter 18 elijah had 850 false prophets before him 850 false prophets the prophets of the groves and the prophets of baal 850 of them and uh, elijah brought down the fire of god for this purpose see the prayer of elijah in in first kings chapter 18 and verse number 36 and it came to pass at the evening time of the offering of the evening sac- uh, time for of the offering of the evening sacrifice that elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abraham god of isaac and god of israel let it be known this day that thou art god in israel thou art god in israel i have done all these things at thy word a prophet is subject to the word not to his own feelings a prophet is subject not to the demands of the people today you find prophets who just see the demands of the people and prophesy accordingly cheap prophets according to the demands of the people so people when they see people okay i think it's a good thing i just need to and also they also can be an influence of an evil one because if you walk with the devil then you also do what the devil says and i am thy servant i have done all these things look at thy word hear me o lord hear me o lord that this people may know that thou art the lord god thou art the lord god that has turned their heart back again the ministry of the prophet for signs wonders and miracles is to draw the hearts of the people back to god not to make himself famous not to make himself known amongst people the ministry of the prophet for a sign or a wonder is to let the hearts of the people be turned back to god get that deep down into your heart and if you have somebody who is misleading you and drawing you unto themselves then he is not a prophet of god he is looking at the demands of the people and working accordingly we need to be more educated we, we can't be so foolish we got to get educated in the word of god and say god i thank god that i want to do things in excellence in my life because people who are unstable they're going to find it very difficult in the days to come right going back quickly we are going to close with that i don't think i can go with the rest of it uh deuteronomy chapter number 13 and if the sign comes to pass and then says let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them get into any other false teachings thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet you don't have to submit yourself just because something came to pass you don't have to just because he was able to read your mind or read your mail or whatever it does not mean that you have to go after him and listen to what he says and do everything that he says and thereafter make him the god of your life or make him the most important person of your life 
and uh, forget everything else, criticize everything else, condemn anything else except for the man who has really said something that came to pass in your life and you just are willing to bow down to him and you just, you just wait to make sure that you want to receive a word from him. And that's how demons work in the lives of individuals. Right? So don't get involved with that. Verse number three says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of, the pro- of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams. Maybe he can even tell you the dream that you had last night. Right? But that doesn't make him a true prophet. If he's misleading you, if he's, if he's not turning your heart towards the Lord. Your heart should be turned towards the Lord. For the Lord your God proveth you, he tests you to know whether you love the Lord your God. Probably there can be a prophecy, a genuine prophecy can come to you, but the Lord will still try to prove your heart and see whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord, not after the prophet. You shall walk after the Lord. And I don't see in the scriptures where people, where where Elijah and Elisha led people to follow them. He always said, look to the Lord. He always led them to the Lord. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. So if you have a sign or a wonder take place through a genuine prophet, he would always lead you to the word of God and say, love the Lord your God. Fear him. Keep his commandments. Obey his voice. You may serve him and cleave unto him, not cleave unto the prophet. Some people, they just cleave unto the prophet. If I could only touch the garment of the prophet, my God, there's so much of life and anointing. <sighs> cleave unto the Lord. They just walk around and, and they go and collect the dust that the prophet walked on and say, oh my God, this was great for us. We're going to take this home and, and bless our home with this dust. They do that, even in Sri Lanka here. And if the prophet had walked, I mean, the so-called prophet had walked over that area and they would think, go there and take the dust off and take it home and say, my, this is very precious. This is where the prophet walked on. Jesus never did that. He always gave glory to the Father. He had followers after him, but he always spoke about the Father. Father, he introduced them to the Father. He said, I'm only a mediator. I've come to die. I give my life as a ransom. Right? So, I think we'll continue with the rest of it probably next week. Seven things that would keep you stable or stabilize you in unstable times. Father God, we praise you and thank you for all the good that you do for us and all the good that you have shown us. We would walk in the ways of the Lord and not give in to the voice of the unclean spirits. Help us, Lord, to understand how to stabilize our lives in these unstable times. Thank you, Father, even as you showed us what excellence is, to be excellent in the spiritual realm. Add to our faith, excellence. Do things in order that brings honor and glory to your holy name. Thank you, Father, for teaching us your word, strengthening us. Thank you, Father, we glorify your holy name. We glorify your holy name. We bless your holy name. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. God wants you to be stabilized. I know this message is going to be very important for every one of us. He wants you to be stabilized in these uncertain times that we are living in. Unstable times that we're living in. Remember, the Lord is with you. Thank you, Lord. 
Father, we thank you that you confirm your word. Holy Spirit of the living God, you confirm your word in every heart and bring that joy back to them, O oh God, that they are gifted to do your will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Let's partake in the covenant meal.
bless your glorious name. Praise your glorious name. Father God, we thank and praise you for your love and your favor towards us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the broken body of the Lord Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord, for our redemption, for delivering us, and Father, pulling us out of the kingdom of, of the power of darkness into the kingdom of your dear Son. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us your word. And we honor you this day, Father. And we thank you. We are so thankful it would have never been anything of us that has brought us to this place of perfection in Christ. Father, we thank you. As unworthy as we were, you paid the price for us and made us valuable people. You made us sons of God, children of the Most High God, saints of the Most High God. You call us the just ones. You call us the ones who have been sanctified, set apart, holy, new creations. It's all what you did for us. We are thankful to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let's party together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your glorious name. Hallelujah. Be free from confusion. Be free from confusion. The only way you be free from confusion is, is to know your fellowship with the Lord. You love the Lord and the Lord loves you. Moreover, the Lord loves you and you honor him for who he is. Keep your relationship perfect, in excellence. Walk in the ways of the Lord, pleasing him in all that you do. And you will never fail in life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise your glorious name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing this is no ritual, this is understanding what he has done for us on the cross. Not only did he forgive our sins, but he has healed our bodies. His body was broken for me, to make a new covenant with me. And through the broken body of Jesus Christ, and the body that was whipped and, and who was beaten, through those beatings, I have healing for all my beatings. For every sickness, Christ died for me. He bore 39 stripes upon his body. Those stripes that he bore was for you and for my healing. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 says, Isaiah prophesied in 53 and verse 5. And Jesus confirmed it in Matthew 8 and verse 17. And Peter says, by his stripes, you were healed. It's past tense. As you partook of that, you are free from confusion. You are free from aches and pains in your body. You are free from all anxiety and worry. He took upon himself the crown of thorns that he may crown you with kindness, loving kindness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive your healing. And say, thank God for healing me. I thank you, Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed now. I'm healed. I'm healed. I receive my healing. I'm free from confusion because the peace of God has come into my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Let's praise and honor him with our tithes and our offerings and come before him and say, Lord, here am I. I'm bringing joyfully. I'm doing it joyfully, believing God for you to prosper and promote me, Lord. Your word said that give as I give, it shall be given unto me. Press down, shaken together. I bring my tithes and my offerings and I say, Lord, I'm not doing it that ritual. Everything, you know, we made it a tradition, ritual. No, we say, Lord, today, You've spoken to me and you've wanted me to do something and you want me to, Lord, I purpose in my heart that I'm going to give. And whatsoever you give, believe God to return back a hundredfold in your life and He will fulfill the desires of your heart. Let's sing from the book of Mark, chapter 11. It says, Verily I say unto you, Jesus said that we can speak to the mountain and it shall be moved. So the Bible says that to have faith in God even as we are bringing our tithes and offerings, we can say, Lord, we have faith in what your word has promised us. We can speak to any hindrance. Maybe there's some mountain in your life today. You can speak to it. And the Bible says it shall be moved. Let's sing it from the scripture. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your love and your favor towards us. We thank you even as you are the foundation of our life and we thank you for all the good that you do for us even in these times of uncertainty, O God, that you're always with us and you've given us 
your life-giving words that we may be fully equipped all the days of our lives. And Father, we pray for each and every person who are here, Lord, even as the truth has made us free this day, Father, we have honored you with our tithes and our offerings. And you said that the windows of heaven shall be opened unto each and every one of them, O God. That wherever they go, that the windows of heavens are open for them, O God. That your blessing would continue in their life. That they would lack nothing in their life. They would have always enough and more to give to every good work. Thank you for your grace, your love, your favor, your goodness upon each and one of these dear ones of God. They would always be prosperous and walk in the unity of the faith. And Father, even as you have said, given and shall be given unto you, Lord, that you will meet their needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you and see you next week.